Hi guys, so Miss Sailor here. So this is a day two of dual credit U.S. history. Today we are going to talk about historiography and primary and secondary sources, okay? So what is historiography? Um, it is the philosophical study of the writing and writing of history, if that makes sense. So to write history and then studying the writing of history. It was defined in 1938. Uh, the term had three distinct meanings or discrete meanings, depending on word choice. Uh, most commonly, the word means the writing of history in abstract. It could refer to the critical study of the writing of history. In other words, you looking at the writing of history and then studying it critically. And finally, it could refer to a specific body of historical scholarship, like my specialty being the KKK and the effects on smaller communities and the way they remember their own past. I see I have a spelling error in my thing. Um, so, historiography can simply be defined as the history of history. Meaning, historiography is the study of how history was written, by whom, and why it was recorded as such. Moreover, it is a look at if and how historical events have been reinterpreted by historians over time and why they've changed. It's important for a wide range of reasons. It helps us understand why historical events have been interpreted so differently over time. In other words, historiography helps us examine not only history itself, but also the broader overlying characteristics that shape the recording of history. A good example of this is years ago, you would have never known what you will learn in this class, um, the Boston Massacre. At the Boston Massacre, the gentleman who was, excuse me, who was believed and regarded as the first person killed in the Boston Massacre was an African-American, Native American descendant. Um, he's widely regarded as the first person killed. Um, they disagree historically if he was either a free man or an escaped slave, but um, years ago you wouldn't have even known he existed. You would have just known that the Boston Massacre happened and you would have never understood that the first person that was shot, that is the shot that started the American Revolution, was actually a person of color. So, just as critically, historiography lets us study history with a critical eye. It helps us understand what biases may have shaped the historical period. It's an understanding that many of our founding fathers of this country were also products of their historical period. So we have to understand that people are products of their time. It ensures we don't blindly trust what we read from historians 10, 100, even a thousand years ago. Uh, simultaneously, it ensures we don't fall victim to these same mistakes some previous historians may have made, like the assumption that the people at the Boston Massacre were just white people who were being killed that started the American Revolution. So, ultimately, ultimately, it gives us an appreciation of how Factors that shape and alter the recordings of history shape and alter our interpretation of it as a result. Um, historiography, it lets us dig for and get to the factual history behind the historical myth, so to speak. It gives us a way 
to reinterpret the biases of even a historian's perspective. So as long as we remain unbiased. So, like the quote I have here, history is not the past, but a map of the past, drawn from a particular point of view to be used to be useful to the modern traveler. In other words, our interpretation of history changes. That's what historiography is. Um, the study of not just how to write history, but the writings of history that have come before us and how these things have changed over time and how we look at these writings. For instance, another great example is, is a ancient, the Odyssey, which is an ancient Greek epic poem, um, which is the sequel to the Iliad. Um, this is an example of something that originally at the time, in its time period, was considered a history. Um, obviously today, when historians look at it, we recognize perhaps some of it is put into historical thought, but there is no actual connection to, um, obviously we wouldn't have seen sirens and things like this in the sea. So think of things like that, the way history has been interpreted and it's been changed over time. Now we know these are stories. Um, perhaps some of it is rooted in some fact. Um, there are kings and such that are mentioned that were real people, historical events that really did happen. But these are stories. These aren't actual histories as they were interpreted at that time period as actual fact. Now we know they're not. So this is an excellent example of the way history and the way we look at it, interpret it, and read it, even write it, has changed very much so within the last um, thousand years, within the last ten years even, the way we interpret history changes. It's in a constant state of flux. But when it comes to historiography, I don't want you to just think of things like epic poetry, like the Greek tragedies. I also want you to understand that you can get it from other things. Um, not just written history, but you can get it from um, a law, administrative records. Some historians can create their own evidence by interviewing people, like in oral history. In the 20th century, the scope of historical evidence has greatly expanded. Um, it also includes things like photographs, old coins, clothing, motion pictures, and houses. This has definitely helped what has become of the interpretation of historical evidence. Um, even DNA testing today is used as a form at which to change the way we look at history. Historiography also understand it's the study of different things. It's not necessarily history as a collective. You can study specific topics in historiography. Um, you can study things like social classes historiography. When I was in grad school, I studied specifically um, the historiography of the Ku Klux Klan and its movements within the United States. You can study things like the historiography of slave culture in the United States, the historiography of uh, the Gilded Age, the historiography of gay culture in the 1920s. These are things that historiography, it's just an umbrella term to where you can look at specific topics and then study those topics extensively to help the interpretation and the writing of history. I hope this is making sense. Um, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to cover primary sources and secondary sources and how sometimes primary sources are secondary sources. So you'll need to go to part two for that.